Anybody can make good designs, but it's these tiny details that make them exceptional. Like, why your text looks weird when you scale it up, or why your rounded corners feel off. And the secret to picking color palettes that actually look good without guessing. And if you stick around, you'll see these UI tips used everywhere by the best designers and companies. Let's get into it. First up is kerning on large text. Kerning is the space between letters, and you know on most smaller text sizes, it looks fine. Figma automatically sorts that out for you, but on larger text sizes, generally over 70 to 80 pixels, it starts to matter more. Here's a design I made a little while ago in this video, and right now we've got zero kerning on it. I just eyeball this shit, but generally negative 2 to negative 4% is a reasonable amount. Let's check this out side by side so you can see it better. It's sorta of subtle, but I'd find nice fonts that I'd use as paragraphs, and they look great, but I'd scale it up and it'd look disjointed, and I'd just blame it on the font. As one does. Especially with the rise of larger text on websites, this is a pro tip to know. Next up, we're fixing them rounded corners. Modern design has like a fetish almost with rounded corners. And I gotta say, I'm one of those designers too. So if you insist on rounding everything, then let's at least do it right. See, when we have one corner, everything is fine and dandy, but if we put a corner inside a corner, then we can see the issue. Everything is equal on the straight edges, but as soon as we come to the corner, the distance increases. And for us designers who are OCD about every pixel, this ain't gonna slide. The fix is easy, just round the inner corner less. Now the current rule is that you take the outer corner radius and subtract the distance between the two corners. So if the outside is a 30 pixel radius and we've got a 10 pixel gap, then we'll round the inner corner by 20 pixels. This of course breaks down as soon as the inner corner is more than 30 pixels away, so I just prefer to squint and guesstimate. Importantly, if you've got a pill shape like this, then you don't need to do any of this since the distance is the same all the way around. And if you really want to lean into the trend, we can actually make your round corners rounder. And no, this isn't like when a client asks you to make the blue bluer. Go into Figma, hit the four corners, and dial up the iOS corner smoothing to the max to very subtly taper the corners before hitting the corner. It's difficult to see, but if I stack one with iOS smoothing and one without, you can see right here where the difference is. Now you might be thinking, how can I stay on top of all these tiny little details? Well, that's where Mobbin comes in. It's a platform with an insanely useful library of UI elements. Everything from buttons and form fields to navigation bars and, yep, rounded corners. You can not only see how top apps approach these designs in the real world, but use their UI elements on your own designs with Mobbin's own Figma plugin. If that sounds interesting, you can check it out with the first link in the description down below, and thank you Mobbin for sponsoring this video. That brings us to our next cheat code, picking matching color palettes. This one has a little depth to it, so if you're really trash at coming up with good color palettes, this is how you objectively do it right. What you need to know is there's like a bunch of different ways to select colors. The one all the designers use is hex with the hashtag and then the six digits, but if you click this arrow, we've actually got way more. Click on HSB and don't ask me what the other ones do, because I really don't know. What you're going to do is start with a base color. If you can't figure out a good base color, you're screwed. No, I'm kidding. Just go to a color generator like Coolers to get started. Once you've got a base, we're going to start modifying the HSB. We're not going to touch this first number for now, which changes the actual color we're working with. Instead, for our folder, we're going to increase our saturation by about 20, and then decrease our brightness by about 10. And then for our band, we're going to increase the folder color by a saturation of 20 again, and decrease the brightness by another 10. But we can make this even better by adjusting the hue for each of our colors. So again, we'll start with our base color. For our folder color, we're going to choose a slightly darker hue. Blues and purples tend to be the darkest, while yellows and reds are the lightest. So we'll slide towards blue about 20 points. Then, same exact idea from above, we're going to increase our saturation by 20, and decrease our brightness by 10, and do the same thing again for our strip. Here they are side by side, and personally, I prefer the second option, but you'll have to let me know in the comments which one you like. Next up is pretty simple. Don't be lame as hell with your card layouts. For example, on this short-term rental listing, it's perfectly fine to just list out everything like this. 
If you're blind, we can make it better by being just a bit more creative. First, let's get rid of these labels. If your UI isn't clear enough to imply these labels, then you're not doing it right. Grouping by like objects, name and location go together, cost and rating sort of do, so do the details about the rental, and obviously the check-in and check-out. Then we need to rank the order of importance. These two are arguably the most important, and the check-in and check-out is the least important since all the other information needs to be good before you do that. Now to make it pop. We'll stack the name and location as well as the cost and rating and right align that. We'll put the listing details in a single row, but add some icons for some more context. Finally, check in and check out will have its own row and we'll re-add the labels so they don't get mixed up. Simple changes, but so much better side by side. Five, lose the lines. Unless you're creating a UI that has lines as its style, like this website here, lines are often redundant and add clutter to a design. If it's just a few lines like from the previous example, that's less problematic. But when you have a list of items like this, the best option is just to space them far enough apart that is legible and they're clearly separate. See how much more difficult it is to read them as we pack them closer and closer together? If you do have to space them tightly for whatever reason, using a subtle background on alternating rows is a better choice than lines everywhere. The fewer elements you can use to get your point across, the better. 6. Keep your spacing consistent easily. One of the most important parts of consistency is spacing, which is typically done with a 4 pixel or 8 pixel base grid. Especially for smaller elements like the short term rental card we created above, it definitely makes things look noticeably more organized. If you're working with an 8 pixel grid, then go to your Figma settings, preferences, and then nudge amount. Change that from the default of 10 to 8 so you always stay aligned with your grid even when making small adjustments. When working with larger sizes, I typically round to the nearest 5 or 10, but if you need to stick to 8 pixels, make your sizes exponentially larger since the difference between 120 and 128 just isn't going to make a difference. 7. Use a darker version of your accent color instead of pure white or pure black as a background to incorporate more color into your designs. For example, on GitHub and a lot of other dark mode software landing pages, they use a really dark blue instead of pure black. Or on Studio Rubric, they use a very light orange. Or if you're really not feeling the colors today, go to Tailwind CSS and for a light background, copy the 50 color value and the corresponding 500 color value for your accent. For a dark mode, grab 300 as your primary color and the 950 as the background. There's zero ways for you to screw that up, and it works for every single color combo on there. Speaking of dark modes, depth is a lot harder when you have no shadows. The best way to create depth is by using cards with different background colors. Touching on our previous hack with the HSB color palettes, we can take our dark blue background and bump up the brightness slightly by about 4 to 6 and bump down the saturation by 10 to 20. We can do this multiple times if you have many layers like on a dashboard design for great depth every single time. And just like that, you're one step closer to becoming a real designer. Or at least faking it a little better. Don't forget to check out Mobbin, it'll be the first link in the description down below and support the channel. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.